Welcome to the Awesomers.com podcast. If you love to learn, and if you're motivated to expand your mind, and heck, if you desire to break through those traditional paradigms and find your own version of success, you are in the right place. Awesomers around the world are on a journey to improve their lives and the lives of those around them. We believe in paying it forward, and we fundamentally try to live up to the great Zig Ziglar quote, where he said, you can have everything in your life you want if you help enough other people get what they want. It doesn't matter where you came from, it only matters where you're going. My name is Steve Simonson, and I hope you will join me on this awesomer journey. If you're launching a new product manufactured in China, you will need professional, high-resolution, Amazon-ready photographs. Because Simo Global has a team of professionals in China, you will oftentimes receive your listings photographs before your product even leaves the country. This streamlined process will save you the time, money, and energy needed to concentrate on marketing and other creative content strategies before your item is in stock and ready for sale. Visit simoglobal.com to learn more, because a picture should be worth 1,000 keywords. You are listening to the Awesomers.com podcast episode number 74. That's right, number 74 already, and this is part three of three in our series with Greg Silberman, a really clever and brilliant financial uh, resource. Now, Greg is a, a chartered accountant. He's a chartered financial analyst, as you heard about in episode number one of this series. And he's, he's helped people manage billions of dollars in terms of uh, alternative uh, investments, real estate, and of course, the day in, day out stocks and so forth. Today, we even talk a little bit at the end about cryptocurrency. So you won't want to miss that. Join us today. You're glad that you're here. I know that you're glad you're here because I'm glad you're here. So we're both glad. I'm glad you're here. Okay, everybody, we're back again. Steve Simonson joined today by Greg Silberman on the Awesomers.com podcast series. And we've been talking about investments and various uh, strategies and, and ideas about how to uh, get a look, uh, at least from the 30,000 foot view of investments. Uh, I definitely agree, uh, as you talked about before the, the break, Greg, that you know, the idea of being uh, diversified is, is a fine idea, uh, whether it's uh, a, a range of stocks or you know, a range of even private equity types of deals. Um, you know, there may be some allocation towards that higher risk, but higher reward stuff. Um, but do you have uh, a, a basic or an easy to, easy to understand idea that would help us say, hey, why should we use somebody like ACG, somebody who's a, a wealth specialist, versus just going and you know, putting all the money in one of these mutual funds? And you know, they've got 10,000 stocks, so that's super diversified. That's got to be better. Uh, at least that's what they would tell us. H how would you guys respond to that kind of uh, issue? Steve, that is... Uh, you touched on kind of the million dollar dollar question there. Um, so le let me tell you my answer, and obviously there's no right or wrong answer to this. Um, my view is that in investing, there is a season and a time for everything. And so that means there is a season for mutual funds, there's a season for ETFs, uh, there's a season for robo advisors and there's a season for private equity okay i don't know when those seasons are um they don't certainly don't ring a bell and say you know it's now time to go into bonds or whatever that the case may be so again diversification is probably the best way that i can help my clients achieve their, their goals uh, that means you know a sprinkling of mutual funds private equity venture uh bonds you know you name it cash even um, and that's the best that, that we can do is tailor that to somebody's specific uh, requirements, their specific lifestyle, their specific life events that they've got going. So there's definitely an element of planning, financial planning, which dovetails with the investing side. So, you know, the investing side is, is, um, is not a one size fits all. What, what does fit is having a personal customized plan. And that's where you begin uh, the investing process from. So putting all your money into, you know, putting all your eggs into one basket is probably not the smart way to, to go about it. Um, and, uh, you know, probably following some automated de uh, device or service or algorithm, if you will, uh, will work for a certain time. There's no question about it, but it's not going to work all the time. Uh, and here again, so I always give thought to, you know, when the trends reverse, if you will. So we've had uh, a massive, massive 
build up in exchange traded funds, ETFs. Uh, we've had a huge compression in asset management fees as a result, which I think has overall benefited investors. Uh, and then dovetailing on that, you've got the, the robo advice where essentially we're saying, look, uh, you know, here is your risk return spectrum. Uh, this is how many stocks, bonds, commodities, cash you should hold, and uh, you'll have an algorithm that will essentially rebalance you. So that, I'm talking about like the betterments of the world, the wealth fronts of the world, and that's great. I have no issues with that whatsoever. The only thing that's got me um, thinking at night is when all of this reverses course, and it will, believe me, as night follows day or day follows night, it will, who is going to be on the other end of the line for that client when they need to pick up the phone and go, guys, I can't take it anymore. The psychological pressure is killing me. What must I do? Uh, and that's my only concern. There is no one on the other end of the line in certain instances. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I, I think that's worth paying for, for peace of mind. But again, that's, that's my, my answer. Uh, and um, there might be certainly are different views to that. Well, I think, you know, notwithstanding the fact there are different views of the world, the reality is we, we should value experience, we should value expertise. And, you know, for me, I know that I will never be an investment expert. Uh, I don't spend my days, I don't spend my nights trying to figure out what the best investment is. So it makes sense to have experts on the team uh, that are looking out for your, your interests and understand your long-term interests, understand what the true plan is and where the the investment pieces of it fit in. So I, I certainly uh, understand what you're saying and, and uh, agree that, you know, having somebody on the team who understands it and that somebody in this case could be a team of somebody's, right? Where, where you uh, guys have more than one person at, at uh, ACG that helps look out for the uh, investor. No, to totally. No question about it. You're totally correct. So it, it takes, it takes a village. Is that what the saying is? It takes a village. Uh, and the more wealth, uh, a person or a family has, the more complicated their uh, structure is, the more complicated their tax is, the more complicated their trust and estate um, requirements are. So it, it definitely takes a village in that instance. Uh, and there's, you know, many different ways to, to, um, to skin a cat. So Greg, as we're starting to run against the clock a little bit, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the future. So maybe you have your crystal ball handy. Um, uh, let me just get it out. One sixty. There you go. Yeah, it it's in the desk. It's yeah. the it's the <laughs> make sure, uh, make sure you got it pointed the right direction. And I, I would okay. love, love to hear your, um, you know, predictions. And I, of course, who among us can be right about the future? But uh, you know, the 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 market has been on just an extraordinary bull run. Um, from my perspective, it's you know, it's scary for people to figure out if they should put money in, you know, is there going to be a big correction? What, what would you say to people who are, who are maybe late to the, the party on this bull run? Should they hold off? Should they put money into uh, bubble gum? What, what's the strategy for them? Right. So the, 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 the beautiful thing about the future is it, it's able to humble all of us. Okay. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, there's, there's just no knowing there's no telling. I don't think any, any person has seen beyond, beyond the horizon and can speak of it. Um, that said, there's a few things I'd like to just get out regarding this, this current bull cycle. We now know this is the longest bull market in history, and history is a long time, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's one thing. The second thing we know is that we came out of a global financial crisis, and I'm referring to 2008, which, and you, said, you actually said this earlier, you talked about depression babies, well, well, millennial, ba and I don't know if they were millennials necessarily, anyway, neither here nor there, um, a, whole, a whole group, a whole generation of people, their psychology has been shaped around the global financial crisis. That's how deep this thing was and how deep it will remain in the psyche. So even coming out of it or since coming out of it, which was in March 2009, 2009 uh, People have always been looking back and going, gosh, I don't want to go through that again. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to have, that's not going to happen to me again. And so, frankly, I would say everyone's been a little bit cautious since March of 2009, looking back and going, I'm not going to repeat that mistake. And that's probably what's known in, in our vernacular as the wall of worry. So this market just continues to climb higher and higher because it's climbing the wall of worry. 
Now, the time to be concerned is when everyone is piling into the market a la 2007, 2000, and you know everyone and you're getting stock tips from your cabbie or your uber driver in this case uh, and you know that's the time to be cautious but right now i don't see much exuberance out there i you know i speak to a lot of people um no one asks me for stock tips thank goodness i don't have any uh but I, you know as i'm looking out of my window right now i'm seeing three or four cranes in the on the atlanta skyline uh business is booming uh, but in a quiet way that the, um, the, the, the the psyche is not at this exuberant point. All of which is to say uh, this market could possibly go even further and even higher, be believe it or not. Again, I don't know for sure, and I'll discuss in a second what one should really do, whether you believe me or you don't. But the one point I want to make is this, um, the Amazon effect, if you will, right? What tech is doing and the disruption that tech is causing in every single industry is um, unlocking a, an amount of value that we have never ever seen before. It, it is arbitraging information, if you will. It's taking a bunch of people who are driving around in their cars uh, with excess capacity, now can go pick up a passenger and get paid for doing that. I mean, that's a huge unlocking of value. And I believe that's only, only just begun. Um, which is to say that, you know, if that's what's been propelling the market forward, I think it's still got a long way to go. I mean, there's, you know, health, healthcare, goodness, healthcare is, is the most bureaucratic um, uh, system I've come across. And so that's ripe for disruption. And I'm sure there's a thousand other industries ripe for disruption, un unlocking value, and that could propel earnings of certain, um, certain stocks, certainly the, uh, the um, tech stocks higher. That said, I may be dead wrong. And I accept that, okay. So the real approach, the real prudent approach here is we don't know, but we, so we can't be out the market and we can't be all in. But what we can do is we can be averaging in. So every month, every two months, every three months, whatever it allows, I would take a portion of my savings, a portion of my investable uh, funds, and I would just methodically put it into the market. Whether the market is higher or lower, I would just methodically put it into the market. And I'll leave off on one last thing. And I actually said this on a, on a podcast we did a, a couple of weeks ago. I said, had a person merely just bought the S&P 500 in the year 2000 and held it as firm as possible and didn't trade it all the way up to 2018, going through two horrific bear markets, I believe and don't quote, well, I'm not even going to say a number because I don't know offhand, but they would be up, you know, in the hundreds and hundreds of percentages, I believe. Uh, and that's certainly just a buy and hold, which says the following, stocks do go up on the long run if you can, can have the wherewithal to stay with them. Okay, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back to you right after this sponsor break. Hey, Amazon Marketplace professionals, congratulations on your success to date. Your creativity, strategic vision, problem solving and discipline have allowed you to build your own e-commerce business. Wouldn't it be great if you had more time to focus on the things that truly drive the sales and growth of your company? Instead of getting lost in a dozen different services and countless spreadsheets, what if there was one system that connected to your Amazon account and automatically gave you the information that you needed to make great decisions and really impact your business? Parsimony ERP can do that. Parsimony is the business operating system for your marketplace business. With Parsimony, you get true double entry bookkeeping, easy financial statements, full customer service tools, and items item by item profitability, along with project and task management, and more features are being added all the time. Learn more at parsimony.com. That's parsimony, P-A-R-S-I-M-O-N-Y.com. Parsimony.com. We've got that. Boy, I think that's really sage wisdom. And I, I do want to just echo that, uh, first of all, uh, very uh, salient advice there, and I think uh, uh, good predictions as well. But the, the reality is, you know, so many people I knew, especially during that the dot com meltdown of 2000 or the housing meltdown of you know 2007. You know, all of so many people, uh, not all of them, but so many said, "Oh, we should sell. We got to get out." You know, and in many cases, the dot bombs. You know, they they shouldn't have been in in the first place, and there's nowhere to go. But in most other cases, I remember um, some friends saying, "You know, hey, we've lost 50 percent of our." Um, you know, value in the last whatever six or nine months of, of the market in mm -hmm. 2007, you know, we better mm -hmm. sell and get out before it's down to zero. 
And, mm -hmm. you know, of course, I, I was like, hey, we already lost so much. What's the difference? Let's just write it out. Um, and the reality is those who wrote it out and stayed in the market were rewarded long term because it all came back and then some and then some. Mm -hmm. So patience yep. is, a, is a definitely a virtue. So, Greg, because you have so much experience, I, I would definitely like to get any words of wisdom or derision or whatever you may have as it relates to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. There's so much talk about it. You know, on one side, we see people saying, you know, it's, a, it's a, the latest in the tulip craze fly by night. And the other guys were like, this is disrupting, changing the world, maybe unlocking value. Uh, what, what say you on this matter? Yeah, it's Steve, it's, it's a great it's a great topic. I love it. And it's so look, it, it's technology, it's disruption at, at its root. I mean, there's no question about it. Um, so there's a few a few ways we can go about this. Look, I'm I'm from Africa originally. And um you go to you know, you go to South Africa, you go to any African country now, which has still uh got large swathes of poverty, and I'll tell you what you do see. The guy who's standing next to the 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 traffic light, we used to call them robots in South Africa, the guy's and he's selling you he's basically got his bag of goods. So he's got uh, a hanger possibly with clothes, with an iPhone charger, whatever it is. He's trying to, you know, uh, sell you some stuff at, at your car window. That guy has got a smartphone. And his buddy who's on the side of the road just taking a nap, he's also got a smartphone. So they've all got smartphones, right? But they don't all have bank accounts. So if there is a mechanism by which they could uh, cheaply transfer value between themselves, they would certainly use it. And they do. And that is the fundamental characteristic of cryptocurrencies. It's, it's, a, it's a, um, a token of value which can be shared electronically. So there's no question there is a huge need for something like this, and there's no question that it will continue to evolve. Um, so that's, that's my first point. It ain't going away. It's not going to disappear. It's not tulips uh, in that sense. What did happen was, I think, a, a mania, as manias occur, uh, uh, something new that came on board, uh, something with a finite supply, something where there was no governmental intervention to a degree, uh, although governments can make crypto go away by making them illegal. Um, so there was an element of a speculative mania which we just underwent, and that w was what I would call the first phase, the first wave of the crypto mania. So using Bitcoin, I think Bitcoin, let's say, you know, used to be at zero, was at 10, 300, went up to 20,000, and is now back down, I don't know what it is to say, six or seven thousand dollars. Um, you know, I, I, I don't frankly know. I don't think it's going to go to zero, uh, and it may, you know, but I don't know what its value is either. Intrinsically, it's difficult to, to value. Um, but there's something there. There is something there. I don't quite have, have my hands around it fully yet. Certainly the blockchain technology, which is an easy cop-out from crypto, the blockchain technology is, is very, very interesting because that is a, a disintermediation of note. That's where you and I can transact, even if we don't know each other, uh, and we can say that it's an element of trust and an element of value that we can exchange, even if we don't know each other. And it's implicit in the contract uh, in, in written into the blockchain. Now that's that's value. That's got to have value. It's just a matter of extracting that value. So I, I certainly have uh, uh, stayed away from giving you a buy or sell recommendation. My compliance guy would absolutely kill me on that. But um, <laughs> it, it ain't going to zero. That much I, I, I will be, able, be willing to say. <laughs> well, I think that's, um, again, I think it's, you know, wise words spoken. And the reality is nobody knows. Um, I, I do think that, you know, your point, that blockchain, the fundamental piece of the puzzle that is what enables crypto or any of these other emerging technologies, that's a, definitely something to keep an eye on. You know, in our industries, uh, you know, I do some import export stuff. Uh, I definitely see big shippers being able to put blockchain into, you know, uh, practice to help make these um, transactions, which now are so bureaucratic and so much friction within the system. And, and to be honest, it's, it's similar to the example you gave earlier, you know, about the Uber uh, drivers, you know, the taxis were a bloody nightmare, still are, frankly. And Uber is just such a better way. And whether it's Lyft or Uber, or any of the similar brands, DD in China and so many others, 
they, mm -hmm. we, we've, we've done, we found a better way to do business and we found it by having that technology unlock the value as you talked about earlier. So very, very uh, wise words. Um, Greg, uh, as we close it up, uh, any final words of wisdom that you care to uh, leave with the awesomers out there listening? Um, you know, Steve, it, it, I'm reminded of the quote, uh, and I think it was a Shakespeare quote about, um, you know, life take life taken. Um, well, what was the quote now? You know, if you take life as a, at, at, at the mouth of a flood, so to speak, uh, you, it can be wonderful and, uh, you know, you, there's just no turning back and can take you to places you've never dreamed of. And uh, if you don't get into that flood, uh, you can languish on on the banks forever. And I've, I've basically butchered that, that entire quote, but I think you, you understand what I'm saying. And so um, I, this is such an exciting time to be alive. It is, it is, you know, the world is being reshaped. I mean, goodness, we're going to space and we're talking about SpaceX. You know, it's just wherever you look, the, the, what's going on in biotech, I mean, you know, there's a chance. Uh, I know you'll fall off your chair, but there's a chance that somebody amongst us today may live to, certainly 200 years old, I would suspect, or maybe even longer. Um, and there's a very real chance of that. And so we are in, uh, so, you know, crazy times. And um, everyone can, there's a space for everyone. And everyone really needs to take life at the flood right now, because we are in a flood. Uh, and it's just whatever you can dream of, you can achieve, literally. And so uh, I hope all your listeners, you know, take that on board. But it's tough and it takes perseverance and you're going to get hit down and you got to get up and you got to get hit. You know, it's just, that's the hardest part of it all. It's not having the idea. It's not even executing. It's just getting up time after time after time. And again, that goes back to your psychological makeup and just, you know, getting tough and knowing that there's only a finite amount of uh, problems you can experience before you, you make that breakthrough. Ah, again, very well said. And I definitely want Osmers out there to pay close attention to this idea that, you know, in this dynamic and exciting world that we live in with so much happening, uh, often the, the difference between, you know, um, winning and losing is just simply how many times you got back up and, uh, you know, fight your way through the flood, enjoy the, the parts of the flood that are, are useful. And uh, again, very well said, Greg. Thank you for, again for joining me, Greg. It's been great to have you. Thank you. We'll definitely really appreciate have your, it. your links in the show notes and things like that. Um, so thank you uh, one last time. And Awesomers, we'll be right back after this. Thank you, Steve. Empower. The name says it all. Connecting e-commerce entrepreneurs with great people, ideas, systems, and the services needed to stay business dynamic and to grow. Empowery is a network, a cooperative venture of tools and resources to make you better at what you do, because we love what you do. We are you. Visit Empowery.com to learn more. Okay, that wraps up the series with Greg. What a great resource, and I hope that you really had some key takeaways today. I always enjoy getting opinions of super smart people about you know, cryptocurrency and we talked a little about blockchain and, and what that means for the, the world and, you know, how world changing that could be. Uh, I appreciate Greg uh, coming on and talking about some of these different things. Note that we'd never talk about, you know, what's your investment tip or what's this or that because it changes between people. And that's part of the point of this three part series. This is part three of that three part series, by the way, that people are different. Maybe for you, real estate is what really makes your, your motor go and that you're going to put a lot of efforts into real estate. Maybe you're somebody else that says, no, I'm betting big on Tesla and Amazon and Facebook and I'm going to you know, ride the fang wave uh, into the next century. Maybe you're somebody who's like, no, I'm selling my house. I'm all in on, on Bitcoin or whatever. The point is everybody's got these differences and I'm thrilled that you know somebody with so much experience and so much background like Greg could join us and, and help us learn a little bit more about that financial world that is quite a mystery to a lot of us. So glad you are here. This is Awesomers episode number 74 and the last, this is episode three of the three-part series with Greg Silberman. I am really thankful that you guys uh, are here. I hope that you have subscribed. I hope that you will share this podcast with those that you care about around you. Well, we've done it again, everybody. We have another episode of the Awesomers podcast ready for the world. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you've enjoyed our program today. 
Now's a good time to take a moment to subscribe, like, and share this podcast. Heck, you could even leave a, a review if you wanted. Awesomers around you will appreciate your help. It's only with your participation and sharing that we'll be able to achieve our goals. Our success is literally in your hands. Thank you again for joining us. We are at your service. Find out more about me, Steve Simonson, our guest, team, and all the other awesomers involved at awesomers.com. Thank you again. Awesomers.com.